Okay, so I want to show you a few different ways that you can use open strings in your playing to enhance the sound of your chords and enhance the sound of your melodic playing and soloing as well. So these examples we're going to do today are going to be in the key of E minor. It's a very guitar friendly key. It only has one sharp in it, which is on F sharp. So the first thing to understand are the notes in that key. So they're going to be E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and E. So the sound of that scale and that key is like this. So the reason why that's important and that's relevant is because when you're using open strings to enhance your playing, one of the things you want to keep in mind is are those strings in the key that you're playing in. Now the cool thing about picking E minor is that all of the open strings are in the key. So E, B, G, D, A, and E, those notes are all in the key of E minor. So you can use really any one of those to do um, licks or to enhance chords in this key. So for the first thing, what I want to show you is something really, really simple. All it requires is learning the scale on one string and then using the open high E to create these kind of two note chords that are going to enhance your melodic playing. So, First of all, learn the scale on one string. So the string we need to learn is the B string, and you're gonna start on open B and play all the notes in E minor. It's gonna sound like this. And then what you have to keep in mind is that the open E string, the high E, is going to be ringing out as you play those notes. Now this sounds really good with distortion. I'm on a lead channel. There's some gain, there's a little bit of delay, and it's going to create these sort of cool two note chords. And the idea is that you hit the string, uh, you hit the note on the B string first, and then you play the open E and let it ring. So with some of these notes, it's going to be a little dissonant. Some it's going to be a little more, um, have a little more harmony. Some it's going to be actually unison when you play E and E. So this is what I'm talking about, really simply. So how would you use that in a soloing situation or a melodic situation. So if you're playing along and you're soloing um, in E minor. Okay, so I was playing some melodic lines in the key, and then to add a little bit more excitement to kind of build it, I was doing that technique where you play on the B string in the key of E minor, and then you let that high string ring out. I think it, because there's distortion, because there's a little bit of dissonance with that sound, you can use it to really build a solo. I mean, you can even do something as simple as the solo is building, where you climb up the scale with that high E ringing. Like And it's a really simple yet effective way of uh, adding some excitement to your playing. 
So the next application is where you don't have two strings ringing like that at the same time. In this one, you're still playing a scale on one string, but I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of using that open string as a pedal tone as you play a melodic sequence or a lick. So a pedal tone just means that there is the same tone that's repeating um, in between some melodic notes. So a simple pedal tone idea could be something as simple as this. So the pedal was the open B in this case. So it involves the same technique where you're playing the notes in the key of E minor on a single string. And then what you need to do is make sure that the other strings aren't ringing out. You don't want to have all this noise and stuff. And you want to sort of pick a melodic phrase or a certain kind of technique to um, play those notes on the B string in succession while either uh, basically picking or pulling off to the open B string. It's a really simple technique, but I use it all the time. Um, so let me give you an example of that. If you're soloing along, playing something melodically. So in that case, I'm kind of playing a note um, on the B string hammering on to a higher note, pulling off, and then ultimately pulling off to the open string. And the sort of interesting uh, rhythmical aspect of it is kind of making it a little bit more creative. So, um, you know, in its very simplest forms, you can do something like this. If you want to do something a little bit more um, involved as you're playing a melody, you can do what I did before, which is playing a hammer on pull off and then pull off to the open string. Some other things you can add in to make it interesting. Notice I slid down into some of those notes, and I also changed the pick attack on some of those notes. So you're going to get a little bit more um, personality. So instead of just playing something that's straight like this, by sliding in and changing the pick attack gives it a little more personality. So. Okay, so we're going to veer away from E minor for a second, and I'm going to show you something in a different key. This is a little bit more involved technique using open strings. We're going to do this in the key of G. More specifically, it's going to be in G Dorian. So basically what that is, it's a G minor scale that has a raised sixth. So normally G minor would sound like this. But what we're going to do is take the sixth step, which is normally an E flat, and we're going to raise that to an E natural. The sound is a little bit cooler than natural minor. It's a little jazzier. You can say uh, kind of has a 13th kind of sound to it. And I think it's going to sort of spice up your playing and the sound of your improvising. Um, the technique behind this involves playing a note on an open string, pulling it off, and then playing a fretted note on an adjacent string. So this lick is going to require only two strings, the D string and the G string, which are both in the key. And the first thing you need to know is how to play that scale again on one string. So on the D string, it sounds like this. On the 
on the G string, it'll sound like this. All right, so those are the notes you're gonna be using. So let me talk about the technique first. I first used this technique on a song called Paradigm Shift that's on the first Liquid Tension Experiment album. And uh, it's a three note sequence. Again, you pick a fretted note, pull it off to an open string, and then you pick an, a fretted note on an adjacent string. It's like this. <laughs> The idea is you start to get some speed. Um, what you do is you mute the strings with your palm of your right hand, and it almost sounds like you're picking all the notes. All right, once you get the hang of it, it's kind of easy. It's sort of, you, you get into this groove of the, uh, the triplet sound. So all that we're gonna do to make this uh, into an interesting G minor Dorian sound is take that technique and sort of follow along um, shape-wise to conform to the notes that are in that key. So remember, we were playing on one single string. <laughs> Let's say we started up here. Same technique. The shapes will change a tiny bit from major, uh, minor thirds to major thirds, which just means there's either a whole step difference or a half step between your two fingers. So. And that's the sound, it's kind of cool. You can mix up the rhythm that you play. You don't have to play the rhythm that I just did. Um, I was kind of adding in a little bit of uh, rhythmic variation. You can change some of the notes um, as far as the, the first note of the sequence. You can do things like this. I think it's a cool sound, and the um, the best thing about this is that once you get the hang of the technique, it's really not a difficult technique. I think it's one of those things that uh, when you first hear it, maybe it sounds harder than it is, but it's actually a pretty basic technique. Okay, now let's talk about a slightly different usage of open strings in your playing. This is more for chordal or rhythm playing, but when trying to create a really big sound. Um, Sometimes in dream theater, I want the guitar to have like a really huge kind of bed of sound. And um, this is really effective when I'm kind of more playing uh, big choruses of the song, or maybe I'm backing up um, a keyboard solo or something, and I want the guitar to fill out a lot of space. This is also really effective for playing in a trio situation where it's guitar, bass, and drums. Um, this is definitely highly influenced from uh, listening to a lot of Rush and Alex playing in the trio, and he does this technique a lot. So I'll show you a couple of applications. The open strings we're gonna be using are the E and the B on the top, and I'm gonna be using with distortion and a delay with a little bit of modulation so you can kind of hear the sort of chorusy sound. So the idea is that if you're playing regular old um, power chords, root fifth sort of power chords, in let's start with E minor, um, you're gonna have E, D, C, B, A. Um, if you wanna throw in a little bit of a turnaround, a Phrygian kind of sound, you can add an F natural in, even though it's not in the key. Um, and if you play those big chords and you have the open in, uh, B and E ringing, you're gonna get this nice sort of big bed sound. Some of the chords, it's gonna sound really, um, really right with and in tune with and others it's going to sound a little more dissonant but that's sort of the beauty of it is that you can create tension as you're playing these big chordal things so here's like the most kind of 
um, normal sounding one. I guess it would just be E. So basically, if you're playing low open E, and then the power chord, this is gonna the roots are gonna be on the A string. So you can have root fifth octave, and then the open B and E. So that sound is a big E sound like this. You can hit the power chord and then hit those two open strings after it, and that'll almost create this little bit of a pedal tone thing. We talked about that earlier. Now listen to how it sounds over the other chords. Again, some of them it sounds really cool, some may be a little dissonant, but that's the beauty of it. So you hear how those uh, chords have that kind of big, ringing, open sound to them. Um, I think it's a really effective way of adding notes that are outside of the chords into them and again, creating a really big bed of sound from a single guitar. So the final application of using open strings in playing rhythm passages with distortion is incorporating them into adding melodies into your rhythm playing but not just playing the strings open, but using the natural harmonics that are on those strings. So it's still gonna have an open sound, meaning that you're gonna be hitting the string, it's gonna be ringing without um, being fretted, but instead of just using the open string, we're gonna play the harmonics on that string, the natural harmonics. And we're gonna concentrate on two areas. Um, over the seventh fret, on between the D, G, and B string, and over the fifth fret between those three strings. So the cool thing is, again, if we're keeping this in E minor, um, those two positions create two chord sounds. One of them is a D major chord. So when I play the natural harmonics on the D, G, and B string, I'm gonna get the notes A, D, and F sharp, which are in a D chord. So it sounds like this. When I play those three um, strings and use the harmonics on the fifth fret, you're gonna get a G major chord, which is basically just the notes D, G, and B. Now, of course, you can also utilize any of the harmonics on the open E string, and you get some cool octave things going on here with fifths. So the idea is that you're going to play a riff. Um, this is, again, going to be in E minor. And in between the uh, power chords, you're going to play a little bit of a melody that maybe normally you would play in fretted, uh, using fretted notes. Now you're going to play them using the harmonics. Something very simple um, would sound like this. <laughs> Okay, so there you have it. There's an example of playing a rhythm part 
with distortion in the key of E minor and adding in those natural harmonics on the open strings to create some little melodic fills within the riff. So I hope this stuff was uh, interesting. So the key with all of this is to take what I showed you today and make it your own. Have fun, experiment, come up with new things, and uh, just have a blast. All right, until next time.